journalist. Barbara was a high school teacher. To this effect, she holds a Bachelor's of Arts degree in education and a Master's degree in education, both from Makerere University, Uganda. She is the Wanifra Women in News Steering Committee member representing East Africa. Um, she is the 2018 <clears throat> Africa Laureata for the World Association of News or the Wanifra Women in News Editorial Leadership Award. Then we have, all right. Then we have Mr. Namalun Dakazito, um, who is the intake editor at Standard Group. He oversees news, news gathering operations across all platforms whilst managing the newsroom transformation process. Prior to his appointment, he served as newsroom transformation manager, charged with the responsibility of project managing the group's business transformation project in editorial and commercial departments. He worked at Standard um, since 2005 in various capacities, including managing editor broadcast services and oversaw the launch of the company's first radio station, Radio Maisha. A dynamic and resourceful media manager with solid experience in orchestrating change and transformation in highly cha challenging and diverse settings. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Innocent Tukudu, who is the digital editor for The Voice newspaper in Botswana. So Innocent joined The, Joyce, the Voice um, newspaper 20 years ago as a cub reporter without any journalism training, but went on to study documentary filmmaking with the Moody College of Communication at the University of Texas um, in, in Austin, US. In 2005, he won the Media Institute of Southern Africa, the MISA Best Feature Writer Award, and he won the Best Sports Writer Award in 2007. Innocent rose through the ranks, be, um, becoming sports editor, business editor, news editor, and his passion for digital media and content creation saw him assuming the role of digital editor since 2014. His, resp sorry, his responsibilities include content production and management of the newspaper's digital platforms. All right, so our first speaker for, for the day will be Innocent. And Innocent, over to you. The topic of his presentation today will be technology and the media landscape. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Donovan, for, for that uh, colorful introduction. Um, yeah, for a start, I'll, I'll say, uh, just like other uh, media publications um, globally, we're also uh, experiencing a terminal uh, state of decline in print sales and advertising. And um, we're, we're, the, and the, 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 our print sales have since drastically dropped from the uh, 33,000 weekly run to about 12,000 in the last five years. And advertising revenue is also experiencing a nose dive with advertisers shifting to digital platforms. And uh, there's no hope that print will ever generate any more revenue than it is making now. Now the, the main challenge is that even though the, the advertising seems to be going uh, uh, towards the digital uh, platforms, we we are not making as much as we should be. Maybe due to be challenges, obviously, of the uh, supply versus demand as experienced by uh, the both print and the digital platforms. And the main challenge that I'm going to address now is the issue of the uh, the, the duopoly of uh, Google and Facebook, who are dominating the digital revenue and uh, you know, basically taking it away from uh, from news publishers. Um, you know, in a media ecosystem where publishers have no control over their distribution channels, uh, giants such as Google and Facebook, in my view, are swallowing up the media industry whole uh, as they have, they have an unfair uh, competitive edge. And from the look, look of things, uh, uh, the worst is yet to come, is yet, is yet to come uh, for publishers with the duopoly relentlessly moving forward to dominate the online advertising market with their new innovations. Uh, the likes of Facebook, they, for example, have since introduced a program called Facebook Showcase, where they sell ad spots for their Facebook watch video service, which is killing the broadcasting sector's use of um, upfronts, which uh, they, they normally use for selling ads for TV shows. Uh, 
And they said that, that that is not enough. They have a creative shop that works with brands across its portfolio, including the likes of Messenger and Instagram, et cetera. Google, on the other hand, have Google Zoo, which is utilized by brands for best use of its uh, technologies, including YouTube. Yeah. And uh, the duopoly is definitely taking it away from publishers who scramble for whatever advertising is left uh, with ad tech companies that have the same audiences, but don't have the, the vast pool of data as Facebook and Google. Um, Innocent, please just let me know, please let me know when I can move to the next slide. Okay, yes. Um, now, oh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, the solution, is there a solution to, uh, to this uh, global problem that we're facing as publishers? I would say yes. Um, I, I believe um, there's still a solution. We, uh, just a second. Um, I still believe that uh, publications can still salvage some, you know, some bit of revenue from paywalls. Um, many new sites still generate a lot of reader, reader engagement on their comment sections and on the links they share on their social media platforms. I think this is an indication that there is a great deal of content that people will crave for that they, they can get uh, anywhere else besides uh, newspaper sites. And as, as much as they like to chatter on the comment section, some may, may be happy to pay an annual fee to do that. And if the fee is reasonable enough, it will, it will attract uh, more subscriptions and enhance uh, revenue sources for tabloid news sites. But however, not all news content can be monetized, though, but uh, web analytics can point publishers in the direction of topics of popular interest that can be placed you know, behind subscriber payoffs. And, um, we, we we've come with a few. If you can go back to the, I think is this the third slide, Donovan. No, not the one before that. I think it's called revenue streams. Okay. There we go. This one, Innocent. Oh, the next one, Anna. Okay, we are, we have a few uh, business models that we're trying to apply on our, our the the previous one, the one that was showing before this one. Here we go. Innocent. Oh, yeah, here we are. Yes, the revenue streams. Uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, examples of uh, the revenue streams that we're trying to monetize from uh, where actually clients you know, place address in the, uh, in the website and is more or less the same as uh, selling for print. And then we have Google AdSense where uh, Google pay us for the address that they place on, the, on, on, our, on our platform. And then we have our, our, our e-paper. Um, if you look at the picture in the middle, that's the, um, the, an image of uh, our weekly publications that we duplicate and um, uh, the, the, a, 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 a weekly, monthly, and annual sub subscription for, for, for copies. And then our main source of revenue uh, is the, the events that we, we, we 
live stream. We are already doing fairly well with the events, and although we are still struggling to monetize our maybe uh, multimedia, and I mean, there's a glimmer of hope as uh, we have corporates coming along and gradually warming up to the idea, and we have a few dedicating uh, their budgets for advertising slots in some of our video productions. Um, much of our revenue comes from our live streaming services, like I said, where we provide coverage for corporate events. And sometimes we even cover, you know, civil court cases live. And we, we ever since we started doing that, we've managed to generate a lot of interest from other, from different organizations who approach us, you know, seeking this kind of coverage. And um, examples include, I have, if you could go to the last but one slide where we have uh, video links. Are you there, Donovan? I'm here, Innocent. Yes. Um, we, we, we have a few, a few examples. If you can click the last one under events. Like people. Okay, while it's open, this is just one of the, the, the popular events that we covered. It was, um, it was a court case we were actually approached by uh, the, a, a group rep representing the, uh, the LGBTQ community when they sought recognition in the constitution. Uh, from the course, they eventually won the the case, um, and, and now it, okay. If if you you wanna move a bit forward, that's just an advert. It's one of the uh, commercial slots that we in which we um, we get sponsored for for live streaming, and um, can I go back to the slide? Yes, me, me, yeah, that was just one of the examples. And we have, um, okay, if you go to multimedia, uh, we have uh, the, the last one, voice on sports. Yeah, this is a sports, pro, uh, a, week, a bi weekly sports program uh, that is sponsored by Multi Choice. Uh, at this time around, they are sponsoring the, the Champions League that's going on, and we have our sports presenters. Um, yeah, you may want to forward it a bit and maybe un 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 unmute. Um. Okay. Yes, if you forward just a little bit. Okay, just a second. I'm trying to. Oh boy. And for audio, you may want to unmute on the bottom right there. Um, I'm actually facing a bit of a challenge. Oh, just a second. All right. Yes, we have our sports reporters hosting the show and inviting football ex uh, experts to, you know, to watch the game and make analysis during the break. Um, and th that's sponsored for, I mean, multi choice will be paying for this until the end of the Champions League uh, next year. Yeah. And those links are just an example of the many others that we have and uh, that's where we've been uh, making a, a, a lot of uh, revenue compared to other models. Um, and we also uh, produce mini documentaries on social impact issues, uh, um, tourism, conservation, and climate change. And we 
we sell advertising slots and um, squeeze bags and on the videos. Uh, if you open the first one under multimedia, this one was actually uh, sponsored uh, by Wanifra Women in News uh, through the Social Impact Reporting Initiative. It's about the oil and gas exploration in the Kavango Basin. Right. Um, so it's a bit of problem with the audio, but yes, that's um, basically that. Unless if I can be of uh, any any help, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Innocent. Really, really nicely done. Um, does that bring us to the end of your presentation, or would you like to go back to one of the one or two of the slides that you skipped? Oh, oh yes, also, oh yes, please. Let's go back to the to the to the slides. Um, okay, I think we were within the streams. The last the last one we looked at was this one. We just spoke okay. about the different revenue Yeah, like, like I said earlier. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the the overall revenue. Okay, let's go to the overall revenue by percentage. Sure. Sure. Yeah, like I said, we, we still rely heavily on print for survival, like 90% uh, of our revenue is coming from there and uh, digital accounts for only 10% of, of our total revenue. And the plan is to, you know, to invest on our digital platforms and try to come up with more, uh, if you go to the next slide, I think we've about our future plans because we've not yet uh, monetized our, our content. I mean, we, we don't have a subscriber paywall, for example, and which that's what we intend to uh, to set up at the beginning of the, the of next year, and also introduce other. A revenue models such, such as native advertising, uh, affiliate revenue. We are in talks with African News uh, Agency for a syndication partnership where they'll be getting some of our content, placing them behind their subs uh, subscriber paywall and sharing the revenue. And we intend also to further develop our multimedia content by way of podcasting and newsletters so we can maximize on on those for the review. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Innocent. Great. So ladies and gentlemen, with your permission, we'd like to just keep our questions for the end. So we'll have two more presentations and then we'll have um, our discussion. All right. Thank you. So um, Mrs. Barbara Fajia, over to you, um, please. Please let me know yes. when I can move forward on the slides, ma'am. Yes, please. Sure. Good afternoon. Good morning. Um, I'm happy to be here. Thanks to Awim and thanks to Win. Um, we'll talk about um, the vision group and our digital journey in the last 19 months. Um, but first, who is vision group? Next slide. Um, briefly, we have two newspapers with weekend editions and um, We've got some regional papers, which we have brought down by the COVID lockdown, uh, but there is hope that we shall soon revive them. And we've got uh, six radio stations, uh, six TV stations, magazines, and websites. Next slide. Um, Pre-2019, we've been talking about digital transformation. Of course, we'd attended the different uh, Wanifra sessions, and we knew what was happening in the, in, the, in the Western world. We knew that readers were running away from print, and we discussed over and over again the need to move to digital. But we really never took the, the step. We really never took the steps. We are not yet there. Now, COVID-19 strikes, and on, in March, around 17th, 
uh, Uganda announced the first lockdown. Within three days of the lockdown, it was very clear for us that our print model had collapsed because we could not reach out to the audiences, we could not deliver the paper, and even where you could deliver the paper, uh, people feared to touch the paper. So we took a decision as management that we were going to continue providing the content, even if it meant putting it out on the WhatsApp groups free. And indeed, we started giving out our PDF, PDFs free. But round about then, we got a solution and uh, we took on an e-paper. So um, uh, I'll talk about the e-paper later. The other thing which became very clear with the COVID-19 lockdown, the first lockdown was that it no longer made sense for such a huge um, organization, media organization, to work in silos of print, broadcast, and digital. And it became very clear to me as editor-in-chief when one day um, the New Vision newspaper, which is our, our, our main newspaper, missed a very big story. But our sister paper, Bukede, which is very agile and fast, had the story. Of course, the competition had also missed it, but Bukede had it. And this journalist had gone to the site because he rode on a motorbike, go to site and did the story. Mm -hmm. Though we had it on TV, we did not have it in the print. Some interruption? Okay. So though we had the story on print in, 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 in the local language newspaper and on TV, we did not have it in the new vision. So it was clear that there was no need sending a new vision journalist. We just needed to get that content, customize it to our audience, get a few more comments, confirm it, and would have a story. So the process to integrate and rest to restructure and integrate our processes was, though we had been talking about it for a whole decade, it just had to start. It was very clear that it had to start with a COVID lockdown. So in an, unpre an un unprecedented manner, we took the restructure, began developing the processes and the tools and did a lot of investment into digital. So this is how, this is now, these are the 19 months I'm going to talk about. Even for me who has worked at the New Vision for 29 years, when I look at the last 19 months, a lot has changed. It's rare that you're in a situation and you realize that a lot has changed, but actually a lot has changed. We are now working. Uh... Next, please. What we looked at in developing um, our digital strategy were the, that there were new ways of thinking about, we had to think, get new ways of thinking about the audiences and the customers. Where was the audience? The audience was on phone. Remember with the lockdown, they are now on their phones or on TV or on radio. They want to do everything on, on phones. They were getting all the news on phone, getting it on WhatsApp, and they just had to be there and we had to find them there. So we had to get new ways of understanding the data and its value. We had to get new ways of managing and leading the innovation. This meant moving really fast um, the idea of committees and thinking and researching. Could, I mean, we didn't have that luxury. With the lockdown, we didn't have that luxury. We just had to move very fast. New ways of defining the value we provide to the audiences. We had to look at the problem. What is the problem the audience is going through and how do we get out to, get out to them and serve them and meet their need? Um, the digital era is an era where you cannot fall in love with a solution because the solution changes very quickly. What is working today may not work tomorrow. So we had to fall in love with the problem and to try and solve the problem. Next, please. And next. So the achievements we have made, one of the first achievements is we built a customer-centric and audience-focused business through the digital initiatives. And I'm going to talk about two or three digital initiatives next. Um, on April 1st, 2020, a few weeks into the first COVID lockdown, we launched the free e-paper. We launched it as a free edition because we realized it would take long for the audiences to go through the payment systems. But also the truth is that our payment systems were not yet developed by then. Because remember, in March, you're, 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 you're circulating your, your paper by PDF on, on WhatsApp groups. 
in April, you're launching an e-paper, you'll hardly have any time to prepare for anything. Then we required that the audience signs up. So they, they didn't have to pay, but they had to register. And that of course helped us get a lot of data for, for us to be able to use later. We are able to deliver easy to access and user-friendly digital copies of the new vision and bookended newspapers. Management agreed that it didn't matter even if we didn't get the revenue, we were able to serve our audiences. In a few weeks, we had 6,000 registered users, though they were unpaid users. Uh, and uh, by the time we ran this free trial for one year, by the time we put the e-paper behind a paywall on April 1st, 2021, the New Vision subscriber base had spiked by over 500,000%. 500,000%, sorry, 500%. With a paywall, we retained 10% of that base because after we introduced the paywall, of course, some people dropped off, but we retained at least a 10% of the base. And we are now slowly and steadily growing the paid copies for the e-paper. Are we there yet? Not yet, but at least we've got a base to start with. Next. Next. On June 2020, sorry, back, back one step, yeah. On June 2020, we launched the app to serve, we launched a digital app. Basically the digital app, which you can download from the app, app store, from, from, the, from the Play Store, um, brought together our properties. So you could get our e-paper, you could get the new vision on online, and you could get our TV stations, you could get our radio stations, you could get some more radio stations, not, not just our own, including the BBC. And uh, we did that in June, 2020. And um, we now have over 100, one, 1 million downloads. In 19 months, we have 1 million downloads. Of course, we are introducing advertising in there. It is slow, but it's coming. We embarked on the next level to improve the functionality of the app um, and uh, by, by including the radio and TV stations into the platform. And then we redesigned the entire media section and increased the touch points in the data in the dashboard. There is a lot more in that app and we can see that our audiences, the audience engagement has grown by such a huge percentage. Next. We restructured to support the progress towards digital maturity and digital revenue. So in May 2021, uh, six weeks into the COVID lockdown, we moved to integrate our print, TV, radio, and digital newsrooms, all the 14 newsrooms into one operation and under one content hub. Of course, some of them are based in the regions, like we have one in the western part of the country, eastern part of the country, northern part of the country, and West Nile. So we, we, they may not physically sit with us, but in terms of operations, they operate all under the same content hub. Um, print, broadcast, and digital journalists, at least uh, in those different places, do sit in the same sitting spaces. They plan together and we do joint deployments. Of course, we are trying to train all our journalists to work across platforms. We are not yet there, but there is a lot of improvement. What have we achieved so far? Next. Uh, we now have optimal use of content. Remember the example I gave you? Uh, in the past, if a, a, a TV journalist brought content, that was it. We now are repurposing this content and using it in different formats across the platforms. And it's really optimal use of our resources. Uh, we are training our teams to enhance skills with more journalists increasingly contributing across platform, platforms. It is amazing how the, the field journalists picked up integration faster than even us, the editors. They, for them, it was like a no brainer. They wanted to be everywhere. They're excited about being on TV. They're excited about being on radio, about being on digital, and it's moving quite fast. Uh, of course, there is the issue of, uh, of, the, of the training, and uh, that's what we are doing right now so that they, we can equip them with the training. We also set up a fast news desk that we didn't have, and this has improved our efficiency 
by over 50%. It has actually improved our content by over 50%. In the past, many stories went by, even if we had large teams. But now with the first news desk, uh, we are making sure that we are breaking the news faster than we did in the past. Of course, at Vision, uh, it must be fast and also accurate. So sometimes we let a story pass, but in most cases, we are breaking it very fast. Next. The staff efficiency has grown. We had a, a one, a one IFRA, a women in news, one IFRA consultant come in, uh, Lisa McLeod. And when she came in 19 months ago, we, we had about a contribution rate of about 14% from our staff journalists. And she just encouraged us to begin measuring what we are doing, measure the contribution. And in a very short time, we improved to 31%. And as we stop, we stop now, it has improved to about 54%. Not yet there, but it's much better than it was if you can see, compare it to 14%. What do we measure? We measure the story count. We measure the cross-platform cross contribution. We measure the enterprise journalism. And we do discuss this with our teams. And we do include it in our assessment of the performance. The hard times drove us to evaluate efficiency and continuously evaluate our reward models. And we are working on that so that we can increase efficiency. We can no longer afford uh, the luxury of, of waste. Whatever we are using, we are trying to make sure that we can keep the, pro, the, the media house running. So we are trying to increase efficiency and to decrease uh, to, to, to try and trying to, to, to make everybody do a bit more. Next. So we have, we have redone our performance management, redeployed staff with fresh job descriptions and targets. Uh, we even have new job titles, never mind that uh, many people don't like them, but the job titles were also intentional to stop us from thinking like old print journalists, to think more about uh, content and content production. Um, the digital technology is enabling us to serve our audiences better and to improve internal efficiencies. It's very clear from what has happened to both our e-paper and to our digital platform that the audience is there and the audience is happy. Um, we now have unity of vision. Everybody is getting on board. The directors, management, the editors, and the journalists are beginning to focus on digital without letting down the guard on legacy media. We are aware that the bulk of our, of our revenue is still on legacy media. So we are not letting down the guard on that. We are big in TV, we are big on radio. We are still big in the newspaper. We can see that newspaper revenues have declined, but we're not giving up on it yet. Next. The summarized list of achievement looks neat but the implementation has not been that smooth. I wish I could say it has not been, it has been smooth, it hasn't. It's been a lot of hard work, a lot of back and forth. It's a maze with lots of back and forth, um, a lots of tears, but we are glad we are on the right track. And along the way, we have received support from friends like one, one IFRA through the Women in News program. And we really appreciate that fellowship because Every month they had the round tables and we went in and listened to what was happening to the rest of the, of the world and it helped us to keep moving ahead. Next. We still have a lot more to do. The achievements are big, the strides are huge and we are really proud of them. And I'm so proud of the team, so proud of management for having um, catapulted into this world but we still have more to do. The digital platforms are, have huge audiences, but the revenues are still very low. We are still experimenting on digital revenue avenues. Uh, to date, digital contributes just under 2% of our total revenue. Um, of course, we have newspapers and TV so, and, and, and radio, so the three of them do cover the, the other 98%. Um, the reader revenue, apart from the e-paper, is not yet started. We don't have other reader revenue models yet. We are aware of the freemium models of the hard wall, but we have our own unique circumstances that have delayed that part of, uh, of the reader revenue. 
So we are still getting only reader revenue from the e-paper. Native advertising is the new norm. And uh, we, have, we have gone big on native advertising for all our platforms, including digital. Of course, it comes with a lot of challenges for the editorial independence, uh, because in most cases, people do not want you to label it, to label it as an advert, and yet it's an advert. And uh, so that brings a lot of editorial, editorial standard issues, but we are managing it and, and trying. The editors and the producers get overwhelmed. Uh, they don't readily appreciate uh, tasks that take them away from the creative process required of their role as content generators. You know, if they can concentrate on content generation without diverting into native advertising and other issues, it would be a big plus. But of course, um, we, we are large in Uganda, the largest media house. But by, even by African standards, we are still a very small media house. We cannot afford the luxury of paying independent teams to do that native advertising. We still need to invest in more training and coaching of the teams. Next. In conclusion, uh, the last 19 months have been a marathon. We have achieved clarity of vision. We know we are on the right track. Uh, with a digital strategy, but we are also aware that it is a long, it's, going, it's likely to be a very long haul, especially when you hear stories of New York Times taking more than 12 years to get uh, to, to, to break through with digital. The audiences are on digital, so there is no turning back. The issue is how we make it work and how we support, uh, we support the huge investments required of the digital world. The app, putting up an app like we've put up has been very expensive. Um, there are revenues we can't even talk about. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not at liberty to talk about, but it's, 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 it, it, we have to support that stay in the digital media world because that's where the audiences are. We can't lose sight of the fact that the bulk of our revenue is on our legacy media platforms, and we must keep strong here too, through continuous innovation. Uh, we continue to experiment with alternative ventures like the events, and even, and even if the revenue here is still minimal, we are hopeful. We are doing a lot of events online and physical, before physical before uh, the lockdowns, now more online, uh, but the, 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 the revenue is still minimal here. We must guard our professionalism and credibility. Um, I mean, as a media house, the only currency we have to buy with is our credibility. And we must guard it so that uh, we can still have a strong media house that advances society. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Barbara. What an incredible achievement. Um, in just 19 months, the organization was nimble was agile, was innovative and responsive to market conditions. And I love how you ended up that the only credibility we have is, or the only currency we have rather is our credibility. Thank you, thank you for your presentation. All right, so Mr. Kazito from the Standard Group, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Donovan and uh... Barbara and Innocent uh, for your presentations. So I will take time to just uh, share briefly uh, our journey at the Standard Media Group in Kenya. Yeah, we embarked on a very ambitious uh, project uh, even before COVID. So I will start with objectives and then uh, share with you what we have been able to do so far and then the key innovations coming out of that. So <clears throat> the first objective is of course, uh, uh, we had to wanted to converge on newsroom operations. Uh, Barbara has already talked about the need for doing this. Uh, it was still, it was not going to be sustainable to have every news every platform have uh, its own uh, a new uh, news team. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see how we looked like before we converged. That is uh, what we are calling the standards archipelago. This is uh, uh, the slide that the consultants uh, drew to represent where we were and, and, and uh, demonstrate why we needed to move. So when I talk of the consultants, uh, maybe just I mentioned that uh, uh, we, we teamed up with Innovation Media Consulting to guide us through the journey. I met the innovation team at uh, one IFRA conference in Estoril, Portugal, that was 2018. And I saw what they were doing with other 
newsrooms and we teamed with them to, uh, to help us through. So they came and guided us through the journey. So that is how our newsroom looked like. You can see all those small islands you see there represent uh, products that uh, were kind of running their own uh, newsrooms. So even if you talk about TV, you can see that even for TV, we had three different TVs and three different teams. Radio, there were three different teams and, and even in the newspaper, they were different. And even at internet, uh, the digital side, there were several teams. So it was then important that we bring all these islands together so that we can run the newsroom in a more efficient manner because we were seeing situations whereby we could be having four teams using four different cars going to one event from the same organization. It was not going to be tenable because it was also too expensive. The next slide talks about the second objective, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, speaks to the needs around, uh, the, the new needs that our audiences have. Uh, given the technology, our audiences uh, needs for consumption of news has really shifted. Uh, and uh, they are doing this on mobile phone. They want it quick and they want short videos, they want long videos, they want to read the whole statement sometimes, if it's a press statement. So seeing that our audiences have changed, had changed the way they are consuming the news, it was imperative that we change the way we deliver this news. Otherwise, we become irrelevant. Uh, you all know that uh, all these things are available on Facebook, Twitter, let me say social media space. So we had to change and match uh, the needs, new needs of our audiences that were being driven by technology. Yeah, so then the third uh, objective, the main one was to diversify revenue. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, for groups like us that depend heavily on print, uh, print revenues are really declining uh, because the people use, the clients use advertising in print are finding other options in uh, the digital space. And therefore it was important that we look for a way of diversifying our revenue and the way we found to be uh, working for other newsrooms outside uh, Africa was uh, going into reader revenue and reader revenue basically on the digital space. So that was the objective. And to be able to achieve these objectives, uh, we determined that we have to construct a new space that is going to enable converged and multimedia journalism. So we embarked on a journey to do the new space before COVID. Uh, when COVID came in, uh, it interrupted a bit. I uh, was very worried that maybe we could not, uh, we might not complete our project, but we finally completed. We stopped all the projects and continued with this one. So this is our new newsroom. We just launched it uh, uh, last week on Monday on the 9th of November, but you have been operating here from uh, March uh, this year. So it's a very beautiful space you can see. The next slide uh, uh, is another view of the newsroom. Uh, you can see uh, that semicircular space is a super desk. That is where all the top editors sit. Uh, and you can see the way it is designed. So the editor digital, editor broadcast, editor print, yeah, the head of news, continuity editors, they all sit there. And the plan around this design was that uh, uh, it's, it must uh, allow collaboration. It must foster collaboration, consultation all the time. So we sit together, even if you don't want to collaborate. If I am the broadcast editor and I'm sitting next to print editor, I will hear you talking about a story and say, hey, what's going on? So we, 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 we did this and it has helped. And the table in the middle is the one we use for meetings, uh, except that COVID now has come and there are very many protocols, but otherwise, to have a meeting for the whole team, you just turn around. If you see those chairs where they are placed, if you turn around, you already are, you, start, you have a meeting. So there's no looking for people all over saying, Kizito, where are you? Can you come for the meeting? It is right there. You just turn your chair. You are in a meeting. You turn back. You're on your workstation working. So that is why we, we did this design. It's a very fantastic, beautiful space. I would encourage those of you who are can come to come and visit and we can share more. Even the desks that are built around there are all uh, have different functionalities. We have the radar desk to go after the breaking stories. We have the eco desk to just spend time in the social media to get whatever is happening there, to get comments on our stories, to get ideas for stories, to get breaking news from there and then we develop. And then we have checkpoint there, I'll talk about it later. And the desks are just swirling around. So the first floor is uh, news gathering, intake and then the second floor we have uh, 
the output sections for TV, for broadcast, print. And you have another space on the third floor for events, small events that you can have in the newsroom, like a book launch and, and, and such. So it's a very good uh, space. And with this space, uh, I want to say that it came with a new staff structure and new workflows, completely different. And uh, I have already talked about a collegiate approach. So all these editors and super desk are at the same level uh, with the editor in chief uh, having a seat on the de super desk, but having a different office for administrative purposes. So now let's go next to the key innovations uh, that uh, <clears throat> came with this project. So the first thing I want to talk about here is that uh, uh, for us to be able to do this, it was important that we, we, we create, we come up with a technology that enables us to work as a digital first newsroom. So we built a CMS, we did it ourselves. We wanted to buy, but it was very, very expensive. So we got a few young um, enterprising uh, men. Uh, there were no women there. We are looking for women next time. <laughs> but we have a lot of women in our newsroom. Uh, when, we make up, when we made appointments, we made sure that uh, we gave opportunities to women. And I'm happy to say here that uh, uh, the best performing editors right now in the newsroom out of 10, the top two are women. And I'm very happy about that. Yeah. So we built our CMS and uh, to help us do this. And uh, so the CMS has two functions. The global planner is like the digital diary. If you all remember the big diary book that you keep in the newsroom, that you write there who is doing what story and, and, and when do you expect it. And then we also have a, a function that allows reporters, news gatherers to drop their stories in there. <clears throat> for for processing so the global planner is very good for us because it gives us the visibility of the newsroom at any time so wherever i am if i log into the global planner system i can see who is doing a... sorry maybe Ladies and gentlemen, please all mute your mics. Thank you. Thank you. So, so sorry about that. I was saying uh, the global planner gives you gives us visibility. It we can access it on your laptop, on your machine, or mobile phone. So wherever I am, I can log in and I'm able to see who is working on which story today and even for future. Uh, every staff has a login, and of course, you can do it through the mobile and. Uh, we also use it to manage assignments. So you able to, if you want to know who's doing what, I already talked about that. The system also uh, receives content in all formats. <clears throat> so you can put in your text, you can put in your video, you can drop in your audio, you drop in your images, the pictures, and then your editors will pick them, process, approve, and forward for publishing. So after you have approved, then you forward for publishing. This one goes to now the output sites. So the output editors pick that and they, 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 they fine tune it to fit to, to suit the platform style and then they can publish. So everything uh, you find in that system. And then uh, <clears throat> you can also use it to manage leave days and off days. If you want to see who is off duty, who is on leave, you can see in the global planner. And we also use it to manage newsroom assets like uh, uh, cameras and uh, even vehicles. So you are able to see which camera is where and therefore be able to uh, manage effectively. The next slide talks about reader revenue. <clears throat> we have done a lot uh, uh, so far around this, but I know that uh, uh, relatively we are still very far. It's a marathon race that has just started. But uh, since we launched this project, we have done a lot here. We have relaunched our website. Before our website was available and free for everyone, but we changed and, uh, and started registering every user. So if you come to our website today, before you can read any story, we'll ask you to register. You give us your name and email address. And the point is that you just want to understand who is your audience, who is reading you, and very important to collect that data. So registration is a must on our website, but you don't have to pay. So then there are stories. Some of the stories are free and some are behind paywall, locked. So you come in, you can read all the stories, but if you come across a story that is locked and you would like to read, we will ask you to subscribe, which means you pay us some little money to read the story. You can pay for one day, one week, one month, one year, 
but you are pushing for one year because it's better than uh, daily payments. So that, that is that's what's happening. You can see at the right end there, I, am, I have logged in as Kizito Namulanda, which means I have subscribed and uh, I'm able to read the stories that are uh, uh, locked. Uh, that is very, very important. We also improved our, our user experience. It's loading faster and, and a lot of other things when you land in there. You, you are able to, for those who had accessed our website before, they can tell the difference. Uh, we are not yet where we want to be, but we are very happy about these achievements. Uh, the green arrow there shows the uh, ARPU, uh, RPU, average revenue per user. Uh, I don't know if you can see the amount down there, but it is showing uh, where we were when we started and where we are. So we started at 2.12 Kenya shillings, ARPU, but uh, by the month of August, is it September, we were approaching, we were at 55. So you can see that's a huge uh, improvement. And basically ARPU measures the value of your readers. So our average revenue per user has really improved and we are seeking to even uh, grow it further. So uh, next is a, a desk that we created. I want to talk about a desk we created under the new uh, transformed operations uh, called Checkpoint. So Checkpoint is a desk that handles research checking and we do a lot of data visualization. So if something is breaking, is story is breaking and you're not sure about the facts, uh, some politician has gone out there and made some claims and you want to check the, whether it is factual or not, or indeed as we prepare for elections next year, several politicians are promising things that they might not be able to deliver. If you want to try and check and see whether this is tenable, that is a desk that is doing that. And, and also giving research, background research, for our TV hosts who are doing uh, <clears throat> TV talk shows, for reporters who are doing deep uh, stories that are going to be put behind paywall because the stories that you put behind paywall must be solid stories, deep stories that uh, are worth paying for. You can't take uh, an event story and put behind paywall. Uh, there won't be value in that. In fact, as a reader, if you, if you are asking me to pay for a story that I can get easily, or freely on social media, then I won't pay. So those stories call for a lot of work to make sure that they are more solid. So that research is done by the fact checking, the checkpoint desk. Then data visualization, there is a lot of, that has become very important. This is a desk that gives us this uh, data. The earlier slide was talking about COVID uh, vaccination situation in Kenya. And then this one is talking, this one is talking about by August. And then this one is talking about uh, Africa. Yeah, so if you want to place uh, Kenya in Africa, where are we? Uh, we were doing this and, and this kind of uh, stuff became very popular with our, with our audiences. They like them, they share them around on social media uh, because they tell a story in a very quick way. So we look at that and you're able to tell what is happening. So that, these are some of the things that uh, have come from uh, the new newsroom that we are very happy about. Uh, the other thing that we have done uh, in the next slide, we talk about real-time data display. We have mounted big screens in our newsroom. Uh, the screens, uh, we use them to display uh, the website. So when you come to the newsroom, you see the website and you see real-time website and you see action that is moving. We also use it to give data that is helpful to, to reporters and even editors uh, uh, projecting things like the most read articles means are very popular articles with the highest highest engagement score because this is what is most important and reporters can peep and see that my story is doing very well today and and, and those whose stories are not doing very well today they can ask why and they can try and improve just to try and keep people uh, just to get to know what's happening uh, so we also but we also use those big screens for <clears throat> for tv feeds whenever necessary and they are they are configured to receive uh, all TV feeds, local and international stations. If there's a breaking story uh, in America and it's in CNN or Al Jazeera, or whatever, we can quickly go into that and we all be able to follow uh, very fast. Uh, like recently when there was a, a, an attack in Uganda and we wanted to know what, what was happening, we just tune into uh, either new sites from Uganda or a TV station in Uganda that are streaming and you're able to get that. So we use that, those screens for that purpose. Uh, then uh, I want to talk about other innovations because there are many things. Uh, the other innovations 
that we have done the e paper we had started earlier, but we have improved right now, and the growth is 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 very impressive uh, because we are doing it in a better way. Uh, we are also doing partnerships and native content. This one has grown like uh, maybe one thousand uh, percent growth between April and now. Uh, it's working very very well, and uh, we have realized that many clients are happy to go with the partnerships because uh, they feel like they are partners. And in a way, they have a say or input in how you develop that content and that's what they want. And of course, you're able to do it without uh, compromising our journalistic uh, principles. This is a, an area that I would encourage us to consider because uh, they also, you, you might have realized that uh, when you put an ad in the paper or even on TV, people, for TV, for example, when there is an ad, that is the time you look for your remote. <laughs> to try and see what's happening on the other station. Uh, on the newspaper, it's it's people don't really read those ads. Uh, in Nairobi, we have a popular way of doing ads where we have, uh, 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 we, we, with the first page, we put a wrap around half the page. Uh, I wish I would have said, but I'll show it another time. So, so by that, you make, you help the clients to be on page one. But what happens is that people pick that page, they tear off that and they just throw it away. So <laughs> many clients have realized that if they do it as a partnership uh, and uh, they wrap their communication around a story, it works better for them. So they are very happy about uh, this kind of uh, arrangement, partnerships and native content. We have started several digital shows, digital only shows to try and get our young viewers, uh, young audiences. Uh, we have one for sports, Tiki Taka, Man Cave, just focusing on men, diaspora show talking about Kenyans in diaspora and how they are faring and they are telling their own story. This show is done by Kenyans living in the US. So they tell their own story from there and we run the story here, uh, the digital platform, and some of it we also take it to the, to the TV, analog TV. So that's working very well. We are also doing simulcasting. There's a very popular breakfast show that uh, we have here on radio, Radio Spice, Spice Radio is called Situation Room. So that show runs in the morning and uh, it's about an hour and a half. And when we come to that, we interview <coughs> uh, key newsmakers. And when we come to that segment, we run it uh, simultaneously on TV as well. And it's a very popular uh, a program here. Uh, when the, 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 the immediate former Estonia president visited us, she came and appeared on that show and uh, it was quite, uh, you know, I mean, we already had a president there. We are convinced our own president to come and appear. I hope he will come. Uh, we are also doing a lot of stuff around podcasts. Uh, we have just started, but we are gaining traction. But uh, just to note that we are doing a lot of stuff around podcasts. We are producing podcasts around several topics, health, um, social issues in, in, in different languages, majorly Kiswahili and English for our, for our platforms. And lastly, we are also launching a VOD platform. Uh, it will fly in January next year, where we are going to drop our videos there. And the reason we are doing this is try and move away from uh, social media. You know that when you drop your videos on YouTube, uh, you get a very small cake. Uh, it's your content, they run it and they take everything and they just drop you some small pieces. We want to be able to take charge of our content. So we are launching our own VOD platform. Uh, last slide, uh, are there any challenges that we are facing in uh, all this? Uh, the answer is yes. And uh, the biggest challenge you're facing is culture. Uh, we, what we realized is that uh, we require a complete mind shift in order to achieve our objectives that we set out on our transformation journey. Yet, it's not easy to change human beings. It's, it's very difficult to change. In fact, uh, one interesting thing is that, you know, journalists, we always write about change every time. And we say how change is good for the country and why leaders must change and all this. But when it comes to us, <laughs> comes a very difficult thing. We just discover we are also human. So we are embarking on an elaborate culture change program that is going to enable us to succeed because the new environment we have created, the new workflows, the new structures cannot work with the old mindset. So this is something that we are doing. and. Uh, Next year, early from January, we shall be embarking on helping all our staff to change their mind, their mindset and just change the culture besides training, because we also realize training is very important. We are partnering with, uh, we are looking to partner 
with an institution that is good in this to help train, just to give our journalists fresh skills, because now most of them are being asked to do multimedia journalism. The journalists love it and it's good to empower them. Yeah, so that is all I would like to say. Um, thank you very much. I think I would like to end there and uh, invite questions. Those are some of our brands that you can see there in the slides uh, there. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gazeto. What an incredible journey. I am most proud today to be um, African um, and to see the, the strides that we are making within our own continent, within our own countries as, um, as Africans. So ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for questions that we could post to the panel. Um, I have not been keeping an eye on the chat facility. Sorry, I have not been keeping an eye on the, ca on the, on the chat facility. I will um, look at that now only, but maybe, um, maybe to start off, um, I'll start off with, with Innocent. Innocent, um, you indicated that with reference to the duopoly of, of Google and Facebook, you said the worst is yet to come. Why is that your view? Is Innocent there? Uh, hello, Dan, Dan, Dan. Hi, Innocent. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Um, yes, I was. I was starting oh, okay. with. The, I was okay. opening the questioning and um, and discussion panel with um, a question to you. In your presentation, you made reference to the duopoly of Facebook and Google, and you indicated that the worst is yet to come. Um, could I maybe ask you to to substantiate that? Yes. Um, what I meant here, uh, Donovan, is that. Um, the, the duopoly are relentlessly moving forward with uh, new innovations and introducing other technologies that to uh, put publishers in a very tight competition for 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 digital advertising and uh, my my point here is that we, we we need to wake up as publishers and come up with innovations that will you know sort of uh, help us to be at par with our you know or uh, with the duopoly of Google and Facebook. Sure, sure. And, and then maybe just a follow-up for you, sir. I, um, the Voice, right? It's a tabloid yes. newspaper. And yes. it has been said that, that mainstream reporting that is more in-depth and in investigative is indeed the future. In your view, does tablet journalism have a future in digital? Yes, I, I think it uh, tablet journalism still has a, uh, the future in digital. You know, when the voice was established about twenty something years ago, back in nineteen ninety three, um, the press that existed at the time, you know, uh, was, was too. I thought it was too conventional for popular interest, as it uh, kind of con concentrated more on the dry bones of business and politics. But when the, the voice came through, their subject matter focus, focused on, on what the Americans call the your average Joe or the man on the street. And our, our, our readership uh, comprised anyone who could read. So we gained popularity as um, the best-selling newspaper. And when we introduced our digital platforms, if you go back to the... Um, to, to the my slides. Are you able to do that now? Um, yes, I could. Which one are you referring to? Which slide should I oh, present? About the top 10, I think the top 10 publications uh, to look out for in Botswana. Okay, yes, so hold on. I'll just put it up quickly. All right. Um, is this the one? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, that this just uh, just goes to show our popularity. This is just one social media platform. That's Facebook. If you look at our total page likes and the chase impact, you can see there's a, a, a huge difference there. Um, but we we are a tabloid, and these are what you'd call maybe your um, broadsheets and. Uh, more mainstream sort of uh, media. 
So my point is that I still believe that tabloid publications can still salvage some bit of a, a revenue from the digital uh, you know, platforms. You know, many tabloid news sites still generate a lot of reader engagement on, the, on their comment sections and on the links that they share on their social media platforms. So, and I think this is an indication that there's a great deal of content that people can, that people crave for, that they, that they can find uh, elsewhere uh, besides tabloid newspaper sites. And um, as much as they, they like to, as I said earlier, as much as like, they like to comment and chatter on the uh, comment section, some may be happy to pay an annual fee, you know, just to, to do that. And if it's reasonable enough, it will attract more subscriptions to enhance sources for, you know, for tabloid news sites. And uh, as Kizita was saying earlier, I mean, not all news content can be monetized, though. I mean, but we, we can rely on our, um, on our web analytics to point the direction of topics of popular interest that we can place behind subscriber paywalls. Thank you. Thank you, well, thank Jonathan, you. can you hear me? I can hear you, yes, I can hear you, Innocent. Thank you. Thank you uh, for that. We have, we, have a calm, okay. we have a question in the chat um, from Mashreen. Mashreen is saying, what challenges have you faced making that digital, sorry, making that transition from traditional newspaper production and sales to digital paper production and dissemination? How have you overcome these challenges? So this is not um, targeted to anyone in particular. Anyone from the panel could please respond. What challenges have you faced making the transition from traditional newspaper production and sales to digital production and dissemination? And how have you overcome these challenges? Jonas, if I could, I could take a go. Um, Thank you, Ms. Barbara. And maybe uh, Kizito could add on a bit more. Um, of course, the biggest challenge is one, accepting that things have changed. Um, it took us a long time to accept that things had changed because the carpet hadn't moved. We, I mean, there was nothing to show that things were actually changing. Of course, what happened with COVID, it was very clear that things had changed. So the, the first thing is the attitude. And the attitude is not just for the newsroom people. It goes up to management and even the board. Because sometimes even when the newsroom people are convinced, they need resources, they need funding, and the people who give the funding must also change. Now, the difference now is that for us at Vision, there is a change from board just to the last person. Everybody sees that we must go this way. And of course, as I said, COVID did help us a lot on that. Uh, the other thing is the cost, the huge cost of investment in two digital. I think the, the, the challenge that many media houses are facing knowingly or unknowingly is that we are doing a lot of content and putting it out there on YouTube and Facebook and Google. The truth is that that can never be, that can never sustain a media house because you do not have say on how much you get back. So by the time we make the huge investments needed, the infrastructure needed to make our own revenues, I think that's where the challenge is going to come from. And uh, one wonders how soon all the media houses will come to that realization. But even internally, somebody will be wondering, why are you, why are you saying you shouldn't put that out there onto Facebook or onto Google? Why are you insisting put it in the digital app? And the answer is simple. That's where your audiences should be and that's where your revenue should be. You should not be giving away your audience and revenue. So there is then the information, um, information, how exposed you are. Luckily we've got, uh, we've had a big, big hand from Wanifra and the Women in News program. We've had all these um, week, monthly round tables going on. But when you come in there, you still see that the numbers attending are still very, very limited. So the exposure is still very limited. Though with COVID, actually, there was a lot more exposure than we had in the past. And then there are the skills. Uh, we are whole, all human. And if you can do something little and earn your salary, you don't like somebody telling you do more to earn the same amount of money. 
Of course, now it can't be like, you can't keep increasing salaries because we are going through a, a, a downward trend in the economy. So the fact that the human being must be willing to take on more, change the attitude, be willing to take on more, be willing to learn new skills. And I would like to say that learning new skills has nothing to do with age. Because you hear people arguing that uh, that one is too old, they can't learn. I don't think so. I think it's an attitude. I think uh, some of the very old journalists, actually, if they learn the new skill, they'll do much, much better than the younger journalists. It's just that maybe they've given up in their mind. So there, there are all those issues um, that are a real challenge, but they should not discourage us. You, you'd never know how much resource of strength you have until you start. When you start, then you'll know that you're actually a very strong person. Each individual in this meeting is a very strong person and they can make a difference. Lovely, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gazito, would you like to add? Yeah, very briefly, I just want to add that uh, challenges were many, but uh, uh, the one of culture change I talked about already, uh, the, the issue that we faced here, for example, is uh, it was very hard convincing journalists that um, this project is for good. And many thought that uh, it was meant to just retrench. And even after explaining for very, for very long and very many times that uh, it wouldn't make sense to get a, a consultant that is very expensive to just come and decide we should be retrenched, it took a lot of uh, time. And, and unfortunately for, for us, uh, business became tough and along the way before we finished our project we had to downsize and let some people go so that uh, meant that many journalists just blocked off uh, but uh, we, we overcame that so the biggest thing is that mind shift on the commercial side the biggest thing that uh, we are doing there uh, which is came out as a challenge is to try and change the focus from uh, from uh, just selling ads to offering value to clients. And that is what is the most important thing. And you need to invest in technology to do this. You need to go to a client with the data <clears throat> and be able to show that uh, you're offering value because clients today have that data. So we had to change the way we sell. Um, on the digital side, um, the way we are doing it here is uh, we are not focusing so much on uh, direct ads on the website. Our focus is on reader revenue, getting uh, as many subscribers as possible to pay us enough money uh, so that that's where we be, because we, that's why we're talking of reader revenue, because uh, these direct ads uh, are not, we think that they are not very sustainable because we, we, we don't control that. Uh, but we are convinced that if we do good quality journalism and, and we are able to attract many subscribers, we shall be able to get there. It's not an easy thing, but uh, we have started the journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gazito. And, and that leads to a comment that I actually have for Ms. Barbara. Um, I love the, the question that the vision group had asked, and that's the question around what, are, what problem are we solving for our customer? Um, and that they decided to fall in love with the problem, not solution. Um, I also appreciate it you know, from, the, from the new vision, that in the early COVID days, when switching to the e-paper, the management decided that revenue was less important than servicing the audiences. Um, so this leads to, and that tells you a question around what value are we adding to our clients? Um, maybe just one more question for Ms. Barbara. Um, so in terms of the integration of your print, your TV, your radio and digital newsrooms, your slide indicated there were 14 in total that you consolidated into one operation under one content hub. Um, what has been the biggest learning in this conversion process and what would you do differently? Um, the biggest learning is um, human beings will always be human beings. They need to be comfortable that what you're doing is for their good. Um, you can't do it alone. You have to take people along. Integration will work once people are convinced. So the hubs which have been more engaged are actually moving faster. So under this one content, one content hub, we've got uh, we've got the, the traditional hubs like you have news and current affairs, information and education, business. 
but the, the, the level of integration is so much related to the level of engagement. So the biggest lesson, if there is any, has been that engagement. Then the other lesson is that things may not be perfect the first time you do it. You have to keep learning, pulling the plug under this one, doing it again until it works. So there must be a willingness to experiment and a willingness to listen, even by management, even where we sit, a willingness to hear what somebody is saying so that you can be able to make it work. So as a team, as a team, you can pull it off, but people must be engaged. Sure, that's, a, that's an interesting balance and um, a challenge definitely to get to, especially given the, the, the picture that Mr. Kazito just painted, where change is threatening for people and often um, that people link it to the livelihood I've seen this in other industries as well, where if people can't see themselves in the future, they, you know, what's in it for me question gets arisen and the self-preservation kicks in. Um, and then so maybe a follow-up question for you, please, Ms. Barbara. In the, in the context of increasing staff efficiency from the 14% to 54%, um, what was, in your view, the biggest contributor to that change um, and, and in, in efficiency and in performance or in attitude? Uh, one, we had, um, we got, there'll always be people who pick things up very fast. And some of the field journalists were amazing. Um, you, you'd get up up country and you realize that this one journalist is covering for radio, for TV, uh, for the local language newspaper, and still filing for the new vision, which is the main paper. So when we chanced on some of those, we made them role models. You keep showing what they're doing and then the others keep uh, trying to emulate them. And so having those role models, have, having those role models of success uh, was, a big, was a big contributor to the success. The other thing was measuring. The measurement, it really helps. If at the end of the month, everybody can see how they have performed. Of course, those who are willing, are willing to, 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 to change will certainly change. I don't know whether there is room for those who are not willing to change. I think it's a matter of times. You can, a, mat a matter of time, you wouldn't carry them all along all the time. But uh, we've, for now, it's a grace period where people are willing to learn. And then the other one was the first news desk. We created a first news desk where uh, we do it rotationally, like um, some journalists and a, and a senior producer will be at that desk for three months. So once they've learned to work across the board, then uh, they move on and another group comes on. So eventually everybody in the newsroom knows how to file for digital and to write for their, for their platforms or to work for their platforms. Lovely, lovely, thank you. Um, Mr. Gazito, I, I really appreciated your slide, um, the opening slide stated, putting innovation and digital first. And this has become very evident in what you shared with us today um, in terms of your new modern newsroom. I, I would love to come and visit your offices um, when, I'm, when I'm in the country. Um, sure, but this really cannot be done without prioritizing and creating a conducive atmosphere for innovation. Um, would you like to maybe talk to us about that, um, about this culture change? to enable an environment for innovation? And maybe answer the question that we posed at the, at the start, where is it possible to transform in digital like this without discarding the old culture? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Donovan, and you're welcome to visit. Yeah, the answer to that question, if I start with that is uh, no, <laughs> it's not possible. Uh, because uh, our structures right now are very different. Uh, and we speak to very simple things like, for example, uh, the old culture is that uh, when you go for a press conference and you are a print reporter, uh, a press conference at 10 in the morning, you will do your script at 3 p.m. Yeah, because that's when editors start looking at stories and deciding which ones uh, are going to be published and which ones will not. But in the new dispensation, we are a digital first newsroom. Uh, that event happens at 10. We want information before the event finishes, before it's complete. <laughs> That's how it moves. So if you are a reporter at the event of press conference, a big announcement being made, we want you to start telling us what they have said even before they finish. 
So you have to keep giving us information. You use your phone, you type and send us updates. They're speaking about this and then next is say this and responding is say this. Yeah, answering this question, this is a response. And, and we use that to develop a story here. So there are people in the newsroom who will pick those and then develop a story and put online. And when you come back, you do a detailed story and we still publish. You realize on digital, you keep updating a story. You don't put one story and you leave. So the culture has to change. And uh, the challenge we face that is that uh, we did not focus on that so much. And that's why we're going there because we, we, we see people still seeing themselves as TV journalists, uh, sometimes as print journalists and thinking digital is for the other person. But in our new environment, everybody is a digital first editor. You can't say I'm a print editor. You have to be worried about digital and whether that story is being posted or not. So culture change is very, very important. And uh, it is something that we, we are working on. You can't do without it. And uh, we, we have achieved the uh, success. Uh, the, the younger journalists are very happy with this. Uh, when it started, they were very scared because they thought they are the ones that are going to be kicked out because they don't have experience. But with time, they realized it was better for them because it kind of empowered them. And we see the young journalists, the mere fact that they can see their byline online and in the paper, and they can send some stuff and that is used on TV or radio, that makes them very happy. And, and they also know that uh, uh, actually not in the near future, right now, you cannot get employed in, a, in a, a serious newsroom if you are not a multimedia journalist. You just come and say you are just doing one, one platform unless you are really, really, really good at it. Uh, and that will come with experienced people. Uh, that's when you can do that. So uh, culture is a very important one there, Donovan. Um, may, may I ask a follow-up question for you? please. How has your journey to convert your online readers into subscribers been so far? And when do you expect to start reaping fruits throughout? Yeah, uh, the journey has been interesting, but difficult. Uh, as I said, we started with a new website and uh, all those things we did. Uh, the upkeep is, is very slow. Okay, it's this progress, but it's very slow because you remember when we started this thing, first of all, there was a discussion <clears throat> in this side of the world, Africa to be precise, as to whether people can really pay for news. <laughs> yes. And, and so it was a big debate. Uh, and uh, what I can say is that so far we have passed that debate because people are paying for news. But the biggest challenge we have is that we, we are not producing that quality journalism that you feel comfortable putting behind the paywall. Uh, and this is because of resources and the way we are used to working. So uh, the journey has started, we, technology is okay, journalism we are fixing with time. And we think that maybe after two years or one year, we will see step by step, but maybe after two years working very fast, we shall see results. But given that right now we can see growth in revenue coming through subscribers is a very good thing. But I can't say we are, we are okay now because we have not yet tested the churn rate. The real test or about uh, are the subscribers renewing their subscription or not? That one we shall be able to test after a year or so because we are really tracking those ones who paid for a full year. And, and most of them paid around April, March, May. So we want to see next year, that time, are they renewing or not? And as you can tell, if they are not happy, they won't renew. <laughs> yeah, thank you. For sure, agreed. Um, just a comment from Stella. Wow, I just wanted to compliment you as a leader in the vision group. I think this is for Ms. Barbara. Um, you have on, and are still managing such complex transformation. Please consider a publication about this case. It would be a good industry and case resource. Um, then, and, and more comments, it's been an enlightening and informative presentations. Um, a question for Mr. Gazito from Yasmin. Um, Yasmin wants to know, Mr. Gazito, what made you decide to implement this collegiative style of management? And why do you think it's necessary? Oh, yeah, it, it's very necessary because uh, if you want to be a digital first organization, everybody in the newsroom must think digital. You cannot have a small segment you're calling digital and say you are now a digital organization. You must think digital. We want the print editor to be concerned about that story. Has it gone on digital? 
has it gone out to our, to our readers? And so to enable that, we, we, we came up with this collegiate approach so that everybody is, by the way, in our KPIs, every editor is a, a digital KPI. So if the digital uh, platform is not performing well, you are gonna be rated low. So it is upon you to make sure that happens. That's how we did it. And also to work together because we came from an era where uh, people were doing stories and they hide, especially print. They hide the stories. We are in a system, a CMS, DCX, but they write in very big, bold words, don't touch, digital, don't touch. This is for print. <laughs> so, so we wanted to transform and to, to, come, uh, to overcome that, we had to make all editors sit together. Yeah, so that you don't see yourself as I'm print, she's digital. Our digital editor is, uh, is a woman. So she's very happy today because she's, she has visual, she, she, she can see everything that is happening. Everything she has, she's able to see. Before she was not, she could only see what she's been allowed to see. And uh, that's why we said we must go collegiate. And I can assure you this one has worked. And if I would advise anybody to, 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 to if, if you want to go this way, it's very, very important to try and uh, check that. But the thing that worked better actually for us is uh, that sitting together and, and aligning KPIs. We changed everybody's KPIs. So to make sure that even the tech guys have their KPIs aligned with the editors. Yeah, and we are thinking that maybe in future we should even align with finance. So that finance should also be worried if they are not seeing quality journalism pieces because for now they are not. And sometimes you hustle to convince them to give you money to go and do a good feature and they don't see why you should go for three days. So we are thinking that maybe we should also align KPIs with even finance and other departments. That speaks to the unified vision that Ms. Barbara had mentioned and that is critical indeed. Um, a few more questions for Mr. Gazeto. All right. Um, you have said, you have a show for international citizens, um, which you publicize on your platform. Can you explain how this is done? This must be the diaspora one. Yes, it, it's very simple. So we we have uh, we have partnered with uh, two journalists who stay in the US. <clears throat> uh, one of them has a private studio that they use for producing, uh, I think, teaching material. And uh, now they're able to, to, so they have the equipment and uh, he's partnered with another presenter lady. So. They, they talk to Kenyans living in the diaspora, they tell their story, they record on camera, they have a studio where they do this, they edit and they just send to us to clean and then we share. So it's done from there. Thank you, sir. A question for Innocent. Innocent, from your experience in tabloid, um, how much would you so much, sorry, let me just try and read this. Innocent, from your experience in a tabloid newspaper, how much would you think your online efforts have benefited from women imagery and content? Okay. How much would you think your online efforts have benefited from women Im 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 imagery, sorry, imagery and content? A challenging question for Innocent. Innocent, you there? Okay, while Mr. Innocent comes back, we can maybe move on to the next question, but also for Mr. Cazito. What efforts have you taken to increase the e-paper uptake? Okay, we for the e-paper uptake, we, we embarked on an aggressive marketing strategy and our we are seeing more food targeting corporations. Uh, so they, they subscribe for a whole year for their staff. And once they subscribe, they get a link and everybody's able to get that e-paper. So it's been direct marketing. We talk to, we send our commercial team to go and talk to uh, corporations, but we also advertise aggressively for individual uh, readers. And the ones that we have seen uh, uh, taking up these are those uh, readers who really, who still want to read their news in the newspaper format. Uh, so they are like getting the PDFs. So around that has just been that. And also technology, we, we have improved. We are partnered with uh, Safaricom here, our mobile provider, to allow subscribers to read uh, the paper at uh, a fee. And also we have a one app, uh, uh, a one-all app, like the one uh, Barbara was talking about, 
where you can be able to download the e-paper. So we, we have availed it through technology and then we do aggressive marketing and we have seen a lot of uh, growth in that area. Uh, there's a very good uptake of the e-paper. What we don't know is whether it will hold because it's only interesting and exciting to the much older audiences. Um, we have a, quite an elaborate question from Mercy Frank. Mercy, if I if I may, maybe you can ask the question. If you unmute your mic, you could just ask the question directly to the panelists. Mercy. All right. Um, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Thank you. So. Okay. One minute. Okay. I clear now. Am I Clara? Beautiful. So any of the speakers could respond to this. I'm a tech journalist. I'm crazy about tech, about digitization in Africa and the continent. And I'm glad that I am seeing newsrooms embracing and adopting, you know, digitization in their news processes. But I have a concern, however, post-COVID, after COVID, won't, won't the excitement died down. Wouldn't people want to go back to the well normal way of doing things due to issues around the um, um, lack of home built technology, broadband penetration, high cost of digital devices because of the exchange rates, and you know some other uh, things we need to put into consideration as regards the African continent. So, I mean, you, you, your newsrooms are making efforts to ensure that they embrace it digital in whatever they do. Two, three, four years down the line, as we know so, some Africans to be, wouldn't they want to, don't you have the concern of them, you know, backsliding to the way things were? Thank you. Thank you, Mercy. Any of the panelists so welcome to respond, please. I think yeah, it's, I got, oh, sorry. Please proceed. Okay, thanks. Uh, let me present you, Kanan. For, for us, we are <clears throat> we are not worried that uh, we'll go back because uh, uh, once you adopt uh, this digital or tech using technology, you don't want to go back to the old days. Yeah, because uh, it's it's more efficient. And the challenge would be uh, uh, issues around broadband and all that. But uh, I think for us here, we have good internet and all that. And I don't see us uh, uh, going back because even the even the journalists themselves, the editors, once they get in there, they love it. I can tell you just even just habits. You know, once you form a habit, you can't change. Today we hold meetings every day involving all editors. When you don't hold the meeting, you can see editors thinking like, "Why we have not planned?" And everybody wants a meeting. So the thing is, once it becomes a habit. <laughs> It becomes difficult to change it, so I'm not worried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barbara. Would you like to add? Uh, I'm not worried either because this change is dictated to us by the audience. The audience consumption habit is they're out there, especially in Africa, they're out there on the phone and they're already an integrated audience. They want their text, their audio, their tea, their video in, one, in their hand. They want it instantly, they want it on the go. So it, we, there is no way we are going to go back. If we actually don't change, we'll just, we'll just kill the business. We'll just, I, th I don't think we'll go back. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um, so Lange, you had your hand up. Are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm there. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, I wish to ask uh, uh, about the Tukizito about their source of revenue, so source of incomes. Uh, uh, to invest in such infrastructures, uh, I think uh, uh, you need money and to maintain also, you need money. Is, uh, you depend only on your, your uh, financial uh, um, capacities or you have uh, external sponsors. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so we are a privately owned company and listed in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Uh, and uh, our source of revenue comes from advertising. And uh, we have not had uh, investor pumping in money for a long time. So uh, 
the reason we invested heavily is because we felt threatened and we were investing for the future. And as a consultant told us, told us when they came, they said, you either invest now in the future or you prepare for a very expensive funeral because you are going to die. And the, the, the question was, right now you depend on, uh, on uh, print uh, revenue and you can see it is steadily going down. What will happen when it finally drops uh, to the ground? So you have to prepare and be ready for that. And, and, and the only way to do that is to go digital. That's where your audiences are and seek other uh, sources of revenue. So our revenue right now comes from print and we also have very vibrant TV stations and radio stations. So we get uh, a good revenue there. We are not very in a very good uh, spot right now for obvious reasons, COVID came and messed up everything. But that's where we got our money from and also we get funding from uh, from the banks, uh, like this project was financed by the banks and to convince a bank to come to finance you, you know what it takes. You are, they have really to be sure that uh, you're going to get returns out of it. So it's, it's print, it's broadcast. And right now we are pushing it towards, uh, towards uh, digital. We have tried other uh, uh, ways of raising money. Uh, we do events. Um, uh, we've tried e-commerce business. In fact, we have just launched an e-commerce platform called Digger Classified, where we want uh, we want to take you there, and you are able to get uh, 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 to buy items like a house, like a vehicle, all that. So we are trying out very many other options, but I can tell you, uh, they have not brought in a significant amount of revenue in terms of if you compare with the the, the legacy platforms. So uh, that is it. The, the, re the reason why we are spending a lot of money is we are looking at being prepared for the future. And you know, you have to spend money to be ready for the future. Thanks. Mr. Kazito, how long did it take you to strike the right chord on your transformation journey? Oh, it, <laughs> it took, actually it's a journey that it's very interesting. Uh, it started quite long. Uh, I remember 2002, uh, through 2008, we were already thinking about convergence, but you are thinking it in the, about it in the wrong way. <clears throat> so there are two types of convergence. There is a, what we call accountants convergence and journalism convergence. So the accountants convergence is converging to increase efficiency and reduce costs. So what they want is, why are you sending two reporters? Send one, <laughs> you see, so that for them reduces the cost. So we call that accountants convergence. But then convergence for better journalism, uh, you do, uh, you do journalism, so so you you want to improve journalism to ensure that you have quality journalism, and and that's what you do. So so we we are able to we we, we invested in, uh, in in making sure that our journalism is okay, but we started quite early. Uh, the two way we were doing what you're calling accountants convergence, uh, then we abandoned the whole project. Then around 2016. 2017, we started. Uh, I was given the responsibility to try and uh, do it because I'd been in the company for a long time, and then and, and we we were struggling. So I would say we got the right code when I attended one IFRA conference about uh, Portugal, and I saw what other uh, newsrooms were doing, and it's very important to see that. And I was able to get a very competent uh, consultant firm come and help us with the journey and that I think is the most important. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Mr. Kazito, I'm oh, sorry for this. Irene, I think we have um, someone that entered the, the meeting that wasn't meant to. Um, there's a bit of profanity on the chat facility coming through. Please, will you step in? Thank you. Sorry for the interruption, sir. Yeah, thank you, sorry. Okay, so sorry, you, so you were saying that you had the, 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 the two sets of, um, of, con, of, of convergence, <clears throat> excuse me, and that was the wrong approach. <laughs> that was the wrong approach in the beginning, but you, you, know, you pivoted um, from 2014 onward and, and you redirected the cells. And then after, I think we had a bit of interference, so I'm not sure if everybody got the gist of what you were saying after that. <laughs> I'm sorry about Apologies. that. Apologies. All right. All right, any other questions from, from the attendees today? Um, 
if there are no further questions from anybody, then maybe just a final question from me for each one of our panelists. Any closing comments or any closing remarks? Uh, from my side, um, I would say thank you to, to the fellow panelists, uh, to you, Kizito, and to Innocent. No, no, no. Thank you to Donovan. Thank you very much uh, for, for the good engagement. Uh, Kizito, I have just no, learned something very good from you about the difference between um, um, integrating for, for, for accountants and integrating for journalism. And I get it. I get it. I understand it. Uh, maybe just as a take home, um, because our audiences have moved on, we, we have no choice. We have no choice. We have to move on. We just have to be strategic that when we move on, uh, we, we do not go back. Secondly, we need to remember that when media, how, when media started, I don't know which century, but even as early as the 17th century in America, there's documentation of families who started bakeries to be able to fund the newspapers then. So they didn't get money from the newspapers, but they started bakeries to fund the newspapers. And we are probably at a period like this where we'll have to keep the media moving with alternative funding. And um, the more experiments you can make in your environment, the better. Um, I think that's my, that's my take home. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for your time today too. Um, Innocent, any closing comments? Perhaps Innocent has a challenge with his mic. Um, Mr. Kazito, from your end, any closing comments today? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to come and share uh, what we are doing. We're always happy uh, to come and uh, talk about this. Uh, and I just want to say that um, uh, what is happening is uh, in the media industry is something we cannot avoid. Uh, once your audiences move, you must follow them if you have to survive. So these are an existential threat. And uh, the most important thing to do is to ensure that you keep the legacy platforms, <clears throat> uh, your cash cow right now, you, you try and maintain them as, 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 as much as you can, but at the same time, vigorously grow. Yeah, grow the, 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 the other new opportunities like digital, so that at one point they will meet up on the graph. Uh, that is what we are doing. And lastly, uh, the challenges are very many when implementing transformation in the newsroom. Uh, the most important thing is to keep cool, keep calm, especially for the leaders. It is very important that the, the editors demonstrate that they, they support what is happening physically. It has to be seen because uh, the journalists in the newsroom look at what you do. They don't listen to you. So it's very important that you insist that the, the, the leadership team in the newsroom demonstrates that they are for this change, because if they don't, then uh, it sends a very a wrong message. But even when things are not working, uh, try and keep calm. Yeah, you, you almost be like a duck. You keep calm at the top, but uh, deep inside you're peddling crazy. I mean, because <laughs> if you show that you are, you, you are shaken, then everybody will take the cue. So, but it's not easy, but it's a journey that we must take. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And I see Innocent has come through on the chat. He says, thanks a lot to everyone. The discussion was very insightful and I'll be looking forward to further engagements on other platforms. It's a pity that I have a challenge with my audio system. Agreed. Um, thank you. I just wanted to also from our side, from Wynn's side, just to thank each of our panelists for their time today and for, for everybody that was on the call today. And also for our win for the opportunity for we as when to partner with um, with everybody. I actually did forget to introduce myself in the beginning. My name is Donovan Smith, and I am with Win. I am a strategist. Um, I work in the digital transformation space, and we look at stability. So a lot of what we spoke about today um, dovetails and pivots into uh, an alliance with, with with that particular ethos that Win stands for, and everything that our Win is doing is indeed very aligned to what we at Win stand for. So with, um, with all of that, we just wanted to just close out the conversation and the session today and wish everybody well. Thank you again, all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.
Bye-bye.